speed run. Weight reduction. Welcome to Cool Start Garage, D-Gens and Derelicts. Let's tear this bike down and build it right. If it ain't built twice, it ain't built nice. We're gonna remove the chain, get the engine right off. That's going right to Dave, Cold Smoke. He has a YouTube channel. He's gonna blueprint the two smoke engine. It's gonna lock those extra ponies. We're gonna fix on that fuel tank leak. We're gonna degrease it, wash it, rinse it out with acetone, and put some beautiful goo inside. Seal it right up. We're gonna smooth out this ride with some uh, wheel weights to get that vibration cut down. So we're gonna make this son of a bitch go fast. We're gonna install a lever. Squeeze the front wheel so we could come to a stop. So we could come to a stop without crashing in the oncoming traffic coming behind us. You take the feet off the pedals, you lose your brakes. We cannot have that. Do a wheelie. Listen guys, girls, I'm hoping to get this up to 45 miles an hour and I think we could do it. Stay tuned, subscribe. All right, so I just got my engine back from Dave from Cold Smoke. I'm gonna tell you what he did to it. He matched the exhaust gaskets and then he grinded, he grinded the lip that's in the exhaust and make that nice and smooth. He polished the fuel intake for better flow. When he took the intake off, he marked where the piston was at his lowest with a scribe took the piston out and grinded her smooth just so it has a, a clean channel of fuel mixture he polished up the skirt put little knife edges in so things go flow right by a little smoother it's better than nothing you lube up the primary gear gonna make this thing spin a little faster primary drive gear is bone dry not for long he also donated an NGK spark plug. It's a touch cooler than the spark plug that's in there. We're gonna lean out this machine and make it mean. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna adjust on this needle right here and uh, lower a touch by adjusting on, on the clip. I found out that I didn't need choke at all to start this up. So I just know fuel is just getting dumped right in. Okay guys, we have a pretty nasty uh, vibration and I think the culprit is these wheels. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of these old uh, wheel weights and we're going to find out if we could balance these tires manually, which I think we can. I'm going to glue them on with a little RTV, tape them on, give them the cure wherever. Obviously the heavy spot somewhere down here, so I'm going to put it up here. And once we can get this to roll without doing the swing, now we're going to go fast. <laughs> so I just have stuff laying around the house. This has been here since like 2013. Who the hell knows? Some donated wheel weights, some tape so you could let it cure. Cause it's not, it's not an instant thing. But since we're trying to go over 40 miles an hour, I don't want to be shaking off this again. Yeah, we're going to do front and rear. You know what I'm going to do first instead of just keep gluing? I'm just going to tape them on. Then I'll glue them on after. That's a better idea. Best idea I've had all day. Just keep giving it a gentle nudge. As long as she keeps rolling and doesn't go back the other way or take off. I'm almost starting to feel pretty good about this. So hopefully I'll be able to smooth out the ride quite a bit. Because when you're going 40 miles an hour on one of these bikes is shaking. You just, you don't want that. Guys, I hate not being able to stop. The, the caster brake is just straight trash. Let's do something about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stall a front brake on the correct side of the machine. Anybody that's rode a motorcycle knows exactly what I'm talking about. Let's make this thing go fast and make it stop. Let's get at it. You guys can still see. You guys can't even see. So they sell this kit right on uh, Amazon. That bolt is too short. But now I look at our package here, and we got this nice, longer-ish guy here. And I think she loves it. Bigger the better, right? <laughs> God, I hope not. It actually looks like a pretty decent kit. All right, stop messing around. It's a lock nut. Yeah, without a front brake, I almost pulled out right into uh, oncoming traffic. 
or take your feet off the puddles, you don't have your brakes anymore, the casters. And that's the least amount of fun you could have. Yeah, this front brake kit's like 24 bucks on Amazon. The lever's just a touch small, but it's it's still better than no lever at all. Okay, you got a couple notches here. See, right there. Well, I'll start over at this end. Let me just line her up. Okay, this uh, this little guy, focus, has a hole in it. You're going to feed your cable through it, and it's going to pinch against the bracketry. Just pull some of the slack out when you do it. It's not a bad design. I've, I've seen way worse. This is a good option because it only has one one bolt holding it in. Where other uh, brake systems, they have uh, they bolt to the frame. And obviously this bike was never meant to go over 40. So they probably didn't think they needed a front brake. Adjust on them. Dot, run them out. Oh yeah, that's way better. There. What we got going on there. Adjust it on that. Brake. Got the handle. Now we'll be able to stop. Okay, we're going to fix that fuel tank leak. So, Adam, how are we going to do that? I don't know. I got this stuff. Zoom in right now, dumbass. Red coat, fuel tank liner. So, we got to clean this out. And how I'm going to do that, I'll degrease it because it had a bunch of oil from a very rich fuel mixture. So, Don, it's good for the seals and ducks. It's good for my fuel tank. Oh, that's annoying. We're gonna do that a couple times because I really want to get this really degreased very well. The only way is this is gonna stick to the seams where it's been leaking, which I'll insert a video right now. Looks like it's leaking right at the seam. Probably that well there. We're done rinsing this out. Is acetone and this will take care of any water moisture or any other residual bit that's in there we'll get rid of it i need more water now i'm fully prepared this time let's rinse this bad boy out you know things just never go to plan it's okay we have fun adam did you need to use the pry bar yeah i did does acetone take paint off stuff yeah Yes, Adam. Acetone does uh, damage paint. Ask me how I know. Now you guys that are doing this at home, obviously you're trying to preserve on your fuel tank. But this, the paint job on this was piss poor quality to begin with. I just really don't care. <laughs> Correct this nasty fuel leak. Just wasted five cents there. Get on there. Always use safety glasses and eye protection. <coughs> that was a bad idea. <coughs> Absolutely no road noises on this street. I could definitely feel the acetone evaporating quickly. Still has a tinge of gas smell to it. So when you guys uh, build one of these uh, motorbikes, I recommend getting this right off the bat before you put any mixed fuel in this because that oil is, it's in there. You'll save yourself a lot of headache, a lot of prep time. Because I guess these notoriously uh, leak right from factory their, their quality assurance is uh, piss poor at best so what i'm going to do is plug this orifice because i don't want any uh the red coat to clog these threads yet i have an idea when i put this pet cock back in but okay i haven't read the destructions yet make sure the tank is completely dry before continuing this is very important without a blower drying may take up to 12 hours use a blower i kind of did that so this is not an instant repair once you uh, dump this in and swoosh, swoosh, swoosh it around, it could take up to a full day before it cures fully. But I, it seems like this is going to be our ticket. Do we need to shake this? I don't know. If I ride it long enough, it might tell me. So that's kind of what it's going to look like inside your fuel tank. Guys, wear gloves. Safety protection. I know exactly where my gloves are. But as you know, I'm well prepared. Oh, he's got it on my finger. Dave from Coal Smoke said for these tanks, two ounces of this goo is the ticket but you know me i like to go excessive so i'm just gonna rotate this around slowly around the seams 
see how red it is in there. Found the rest of the nuts for the, the mounting and this son of a bitch is never coming back apart. You can see how I added some jam nuts now, both front and back. And only color isn't any thread sticking out of this one, but it has a uh, Loctite, so it should be fine. All right, I'm gonna adjust on this needle. Put a lot of tension on. Okay, I think I remember how to do this. Tell there's notches on the seat. For a second from the bottom, I'll move it up one, put it right in the middle. What that's gonna do when it's just gonna drop it down with just a touch. Because ideally I wanna lean this out so it's not puking so much fuel. And maybe we get it going faster. Yep, right in the middle now. I don't think it's gonna do too much. I think the only way this is really gonna be beneficial is if uh, I get a reject kit. It's kind of a pain and we'll give that a shot. I'm gonna modify this uh, air intake. Don't wanna use the mount holes, but I'm gonna cut a big old chunk out here so it doesn't, if it rains, it doesn't suck in. One of you guys told me to do this, so I'm doing it. We'll see how that works. You know what I'm doing? I wanna put some red coat right on this thread here. Why? It's putting just a little dab on her. Thread that in. I don't hope you never have to get this off again. Well, if I do, you guys will be there laughing at me the whole time. I'm sure you will. I got some nice uh, rubber tape here. It really prevents this tank from twisting and the rubber tape locks on itself. It's it's pretty neat. We're damn near ready to fire this bad boy up again. I'm hoping I have enough of that red goo in here where if they do damage the welds, it won't go anywhere. There she is, guys. Um, don't use white RTV. That's to keep moisture out of cracks and crevices. Use an epoxy, use Elmer's glue. It's probably better than that. No, but, well, seriously. <laughs> don't use Elmer's glue. Use an epoxy, use something that is meant for gluing things to other things. So I'm gonna do the right thing and uh, re-glue my weights back on. And this thing is ready to go ripping. Oh yeah. I got a two part epoxy and I'm re-gluing these weights on. And I was just thinking, I'm not gonna get this running today. I do that, it's gonna be spitting all my weights all over the place. Hit me in the back of the head, cars, pedestrians. Next thing you know, I have a lawsuit. We don't want that. We'll let it cure for 12, 24 hours. Probably 24 has gotta work tomorrow. We'll make this thing go fast tomorrow. What in the hell do you got going on? And why do you get this fire off again? Well, you see, we have some bearing play. Either I wore it out or I just didn't. When I initially put it together, I didn't do it right. So what I'm gonna do, hook something out of this, loosen this up, put something on the backside to hold the whole axle from spinning, and tighten this a little bit so I get minimal axle movement. And I'll put it back down, put the wheel back on, and send it. Okay, this is a very first speed run I'm doing with all the blueprinting and all that fun stuff. <laughs> Like we're getting 37 38 out of his peak she's running hot definitely broken in now some of you guys are gonna be just not happy with how i'm treating this barely broken in motor i need a bear oh no beer run now here's the real speed run i'm out of beer
made it. Built for a six pack. There we go. I'll tell you the time it took me to get here. Made a bag. It was about a 10 minute trip one way. There. We'll see how much vibration this thing had. Not bad. I think she smoothed out. <sighs> okay, guys. So all the work we just did on this, it might not have given us much miles per hour. But mind you, it was free except for the red coat fixing the leak, which works flawless. It does run smoother. You twist it, she pick up, picks up and goes. It definitely has a slightly noticeable more torque. It's a, it's a joy to ride. It gets beer, fits on the basket. What else do you need it for? This thing's great. Balancing the tires was a great idea. It kept it from shaking my beer and having it explode in my face. We don't want that. I can't absorb beer through my face. I gotta drink it. Stops now, has this nice nifty front brake. It's awesome. So part four of this video, we're gonna do some aftermarket uh, modifications. We're gonna go on the old Blakeberry or the bicycleengines.com, whatever it's called, and we're gonna buy some aftermarket parts to see if that would actually make it go faster. I recommend you guys subscribe and hit the dang old bell so you can see that in part four. And please put some stuff in the comments and recommend whatever you think you want. It could be something you are uh, too scared to spend your own money on. I'm an idiot. I'll do it. So you guys don't have to. Thanks for watching Cold Start Garage.